We're continuing in chapter 31 and we're going to talk about casts now. Our older casts, we always made out of plaster, and you'll still see some of these. With a plaster cast, it takes at least 24 hours and up to 48 hours for it to fully dry. During that time, we want to make sure we're turning the child and changing where the weight is on that cast because um, it can get out of shape just from the weight of the extremity laying on there until it gets dry. With these, it's good to have a fan in the room to circulate air to um, kind of help it dry faster, but we would never want to use a hot fan like a blow dryer or anything like that because we want the cast to dry from the inside out and if you're blowing hot air it's going to go from the outside in and the other problem is when it's wet on the inside uh, that moisture conducts heat and so if you're blowing it with something hot that heat can go in against the skin and you can get burns on the skin and they may actually have some decreased sensation from the injury, so they're not even going to feel that we're burning them. So no hot fans, just a, you know, circulating the air kind of room fan. Um, neurovascular checks are a priority. When we put a cast on, we've already got the injury that required the cast, whether that's a surgical thing or, or not. Um, so we're worried about perfusion and sensation, uh, you know, so nerves as well as uh, circulation, distal to that break site. And then when we put the cast on, if a lot of swelling happens, we can be squeezing that spot so much that we've impeded uh, the blood flow or put pressure on the nerves. So neurovascular checks, which is our color, sensation, temperature, and movement, or the P's, uh, still you're looking for the same thing, pallor and uh, color sensation temperature movement. That's still the way I remember it. So here's different types of casts, and you can see um, lots of different things that we do. And here's just some more pictures again. Our newer casts we tend to make out of synthetic materials rather than the plaster and the advantage is they dry much quicker. They dry within several minutes instead of a couple of days. Now the synthetic material itself is water resistant. The problem is we pretty much always put a cotton batting inside uh, against the skin before we wrap the casting around it and that is not water resistant. So we still can't let these kids um, put the cast into water. We often will cover it with a plastic bag and let them shower, but we don't want it submerged down, you know, like in a bathtub or uh, something. After a synthetic cast has dried, if we see a hot spot on the outside, that's a real concern. That means there's infection underneath. Um, remember, this child's likely either had surgery or a break where, you know, there may have been some impairment to the skin. Um, so infection is a, usually a concern, so those hot spots we're looking for, and also sometimes there's bleeding. Again, they may have had surgery or they may have had an open uh, uh, fracture, um, compound fracture, where the bone's through the skin, and so there could be some bleeding, plus that the infection goes right along with that. If there's bleeding, we're going to draw on the cast a line right around the edge of the, the bleeding so we can see exactly how big it is so we can tell is it still bleeding is it getting bigger we may have some bleeding immediately after surgery but it shouldn't be continuing pedaling this is something we used to do on every cast before we let the child go home and I was talking to the um, I don't know if she's an NP or a PA uh, in ortho and she said we really don't do this routinely anymore they wait until the child comes into clinic and then they do it on any areas that are rubbing on the skin and I have a picture of it coming up but it isn't necessarily something we do on every kid anymore. And here's a picture of a spike cast and you can see she's got her legs abducted there. It's got that rod between it so something going on with her hips. And here's a baby. Casts can be a problem. They're heavy so mom can no longer carry this baby easily but fitting them in the car seat 
or you can't really get a wheelchair because they don't bend at the hips. So we've got to get a reclining wheelchair or for a little one, a wagon really works the best, a wagon and, and pillows. But we've got to think about mom being able to carry the, the child because um, with that cast they are too heavy to just carry usually the, the way they usually do. Now, when a kid gets a cast, they pretty quickly get used to it. Um, once it's, you know, the initial injury is not painful anymore, they just kind of function with the cast and act like they've always had it and that it's part of them. And they can be really afraid of having it removed because they feel like you're cutting off part of them. This is a picture of that peddling I was talking about. We take um, either mole skin, which is kind of a thick, fuzzy brown, or um, on the spica cast around the peri area, we'll use that pink tape that's uh, kind of plastic, so it's a little bit waterproof, and put it, make petals just like this. And one goes just a little bit over the one before. Each one um, is a, a slightly on top of the previous one so that you cover that area. The mole skin is softer than if there's a rough edge on the cast that's rubbing in an area. We want to do that to protect the skin. And um, if there's concern about moisture like the peri area on a uh, spica cast, we can use that pink tape to try and um, prevent moisture, urine, whatever, from getting into the cast. Ambulation and mobility is a problem when we put kids in casts. So um, kids want to be more mobile usually, so they're usually pretty good at adapting to whatever we can find them that gives them some mobility they will be glad to use. Now, traction. Sometimes in certain uh, injuries we have to do traction. There's three parts to traction. There's the traction, which is the weight that's pulling distal to the, the break. So the bone fragment, the piece that's broken off, we're pulling distal to that. There's counter traction, which is what prevents the child from just being pulled away by that the weight of the traction, and that's their body weight. And then there's friction, something that keeps them from sliding down, and that's uh, usually friction against the bed sheets. And the main purposes we use traction for, first is to fatigue the muscles. And particularly in things like a femur fracture, those are big, strong muscles. And you do injury to that bone, those muscles contract, and it pulls the bone out of alignment. And you know, it is noticeably shorter, that leg, than the other, because the two pieces of the femur are, they're crossed each rather than being end to end they actually you know have the ends have gone past each other so we need to fatigue those muscles by pulling on them so that we can get the bone realigned it also reduces muscle spasm by fatiguing those muscles um, so our purposes are to fatigue the, the muscles to position the distal and proximal ends of the broken bone and then to immobilize it uh, in the past um, I worked some at UMC and there we used to always put femur fractures into traction um, and we would keep them about a month until we saw some pretty good signs of healing going on. At Children's we don't do traction nearly as often. It's usually done just for a couple days until they go into surgery and we seem to almost always uh, surgically uh, fix these. The problem is most of the time our fractures happen at the, that growth plate, at the epiphyseal, and we can have problems with um, bone growth. Okay, and here's just a, a picture. You can see the counter traction is kind of pulling backwards, so towards the head. The traction is pulling distal away, and it allows that to um, line up correctly. And here's a kid in uh, traction here. You can see that here's his leg and this goes up and over and then down here at the foot of the bed is the weights that are pulling. And he's playing a video game. These kids are act like normal kids even though they can't move. Now types of traction manual means you do it by hand. Um, 
you grab a hold of the extremity, whatever it is, distal to where the, the fracture is, and you pull down. Skin traction. This seems to be what they use at children's when they do have traction. And this, uh, you have something on the skin surface that's pulling uh, to pull that extremity. You know, most of the time, you can do elbows. Occasionally, there'll be traction. Usually, it's legs. So usually, we're talking about femurs. So um, I always am picturing a leg when I'm talking about this. So skin traction, we've got um, some something pretty tightly adhered to the leg, either with uh, tapes that stick or um, a, if it's just wrapped around there, it's pretty tight so that we can pull with that the traction weights. And then there's skeletal uh, traction, and this is what I was used to at UMC. We'd actually put pins into the bone, and that way we can pull on that bone that's distal from the break and get it to line up. And um, this is traction where this is not skeletal. This would be skin. So we've got the legs here. We're pulling with this wrap, and uh, it's hooked here at the feet, and it's pulling and comes over here, and here's our weights. So those weights are pulling continually to get the, the bone lined up. And um, like I said, children's, it's usually just for a couple days till they get into surgery. Occasionally, though, it can be for up to a month to let a femur uh, heal. And we've got this kid kind of tied down so that he's not sliding around in the bed and goofing up uh, how that's pulling because we want that weight continuous and constant. And here again is another type of uh, the skin traction. So we're pulling down and here's the weight. And this is the one they usually use at children's, the Bucks traction. Uh, and here, you know, again, we've got the knee in a sling, but here is where we're pulling with the weight, the real traction. <clears throat> and um, this is our skeletal traction. So we've got, this is probably a femur fracture right here, because we've got this pulling this must be somewhere distal and uh, then we've got this held up just to support it to keep this at 90 degrees but we've got this hooked into the bones right at the distal end of the femur here and it hooks up and it comes down to the traction so that's the weights pulling it and then these are just weights to keep the, the leg at 90 degrees the doctor will order how heavy the weights should be and um, they say on them, sometimes you have to add a couple of fives or, you know, it's sort of like adding, um, if you're a weight lifter, you add things on to make the right weight. Sometimes, usually we have something in the right weight, but sometimes you have to add a couple things together. But the doctor will order the weight and it's kind of based on what the child weighs, what they think will is needed to uh, fatigue those muscles and get that bone realigned. Things that won't be on this exam, you should be doing them in med surge. And let's stop here.